This is Tusculum College Football, and this is The Jerry Odom Show. The Jerry Odom Show is brought to you in part by your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1947. Sodexo, proud food supplier of Tusculum College. By Creekside Markets, stop in and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza today. By Premier Transportation, the official bus provider for Tusculum College Athletics. And brought to you in part by Comcast. The Jerry Odom Show begins now. It is the 20th meeting of the Lenoran Bears and the Tusculum Pioneers. It is the 18th season for the Tusculum Pioneer football program and all athletics as a South Atlantic Conference member. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Jerry Odom Show. I am Brian Staten to be joined by Pioneer coach Jerry Odom. The Pioneers taking on the Lenore Ryan Bears this past Saturday. We'll get to that, but I also think what's interesting to talk about is 18 years of Tunskillum Athletics in the South Atlantic Conference. Born as a SAC 8 football conference only, it quickly morphed into every single sport known humanly to man in the, all of these colleges. But for the most part, it has always been about a football conference. Not every school in the South Atlantic Conference has football. I think about uh, schools such as Queens that doesn't have the, the football just yet, all of that, you know, and added. Maybe they're thinking about bringing it on, but always when you think about South Atlantic Conference football, you think about the SAC 8. And most of the teams are still currently residing there. Presbyterian is gone out of the South Atlantic Conference Division I member. Elon, when we were first here, in the South Atlantic Conference, members of the South Atlantic Conference quickly moved on to a Division I program, so on and so forth. There have been some teams that have left and some teams that have come on. Newberry has actually rejoined the South Atlantic Conference, always as a strong competitor. Brevard is in. Now they'll be out as they will drop to a Division III program next year. But just overall, 18 years of South Atlantic Conference football, and really one guy had been a part of that in the South Atlantic Conference. 2003. South Atlantic Conference champions. Didn't own it outright, but think about some of the guys on that team that were bringing us conference championships. Carson Bradley as a quarterback, Tony Colston as a quarterback, and the big guy, Ricardo Coakley, bringing us some championship level and championship caliber players. Now, there was Craig Pritchett as, a, as an All-American that you can sit here and think about what we did defensively that year. Still gave up a whole bunch of points but still were very good offensively as well, no question about it. Now, you fast forward a little bit to 2008, and you've got a quarterback in Corey Russell with a bunch of junior wide receivers. Uh, think about all of that. Rashad Carter was just a youngster in 2008, but Corey Russell was the man. Justin Scott was the, the man. They called him Superman for the most part. And then there's Jeremy Thompson as the uh, free safety. Still gave up a whole lot of points, but man, they sure did score a bunch of points as well. Advancing to the NCAA playoffs, winning against Albany State at home, going on the road to Delta State. Really the two banner years for the Pioneers. You know, Caleb Slover was great at the beginning, 2000 and 2001, when Dieter Brock was the offensive coordinator and brought Air Raid to Tusculum after struggling in the late 90s. But then the defense offense caught up with what the defense was doing. Ron Roberts became so good, he left to take Division I jobs. Lance Royal would take over, was great at defensive coordinators. And then we changed our offense a little bit, brought back the spread and the air raid. And now, with Jerry Odom, trying to have more of a balance, more pro. So think about all the years that have gone through and all of the players that have come through and some of the guys who have meant a whole lot to us. Many were part of this great rivalry with the Lenore Ride Bears. 2000, 2001, maybe 2002, DJ Starling flying through, blocking an extra point, a field goal, preserving a 10-9 win for the Pioneers. We are going into this game this week with the Bears, thinking that we may have that type of score, and we got that for an extremely long time. It was the 20th meeting, with the first being played back in 1924. Last year, a great meaningful meeting, 55-52 in triple overtime. It's a Bear program that's really proud of itself. Three years ago in the national championship game, three-time South Atlantic Conference champions. Who knows if they'll get there, but Mike Keller, good coach, brings a good philosophy, finally got things going on track with his son running the quarterback position. Jerry Odom, great coach, knows defense, and it was a dogfight till late in the third quarter 
as well. In this contest, Nelson Brown rushes for 261 yards, two touchdowns. Luke Lancaster struggles 17 of 44, just 157 yards passing. And the LR Bears come out on top of the Tusculum Pioneers by a final score of 31 to 3. We had to do some research. That three points the Pioneers scored in regulation against UVA Wise was the first time the Pioneers had been held under seven points in any game going back to 1934. Well, now it's happened twice in one season. They'll get it turned around. We'll get it going. And we'll take on a Newberry Wolves team this week that may not know what hit them offensively. Well, before we get there, let's wrap up what happened last week. When we return, we'll be joined by Pioneer head coach Jerry Odom. And that's when the Jerry Odom Show continues after this. Your Greenville Light and Power System, an electrical distributor of TVA, serving Greenville and Green County since 1945. Your Greenville Light and Power is dedicated to excellence in service and reliability. Visit online at glps.net. <laughs> Welcome you back into the Jerry Odom Show. As the Tusculum Pioneers fall to the Lenorine Bears this past Saturday, both uh, South Atlantic Conference openers for both programs. The Lenorine Bears with a new head coach and Mike Keller. We're joined by our own new coach, Jerry Odom. And in the game, you know, I know going in that you had your worries and, and, and wondering how are they going to be different. LR, they don't have a whole lot of stuff. Keller has changed some things at Concord University, at Cal PA. Yeah. He's a very balanced guy offensively. Yeah. He's got his son. He's not sure what we're doing there in the locker room, if that's causing some strife with the team. They came out and played a whole lot better than they had looked the first two weeks. Mike got him playing great. Uh, Mike knows what he's doing on offense. I told our guys that, especially our defense staff, he's, he's going to hit you in some different ways that you're going to be expecting, so we got to do a good job. Uh, trying to get beat over the top. They have 180 who can really run. Um, didn't end up happening for us. But uh, we didn't play very well. And uh, there's no other really way to say it. You know, they played better than we did. They probably won the game at the line of scrimmage there, especially on the offensive side. You know, against our defense, we didn't tackle well enough to be, uh, you know, play against any kind of offense and, and give Mike and them credit. They did a nice job. You've seen LR before in Moret Stadium, uh, being a coach even down in Jacksonville mm -hmm. in high school, uh, bringing some kids up here and, yeah. and letting them play there. But your first overall feeling of Moret Stadium and the, yeah. and the aura of the conference. Yeah, nice. You know, really nice stadium. I enjoyed it. I think our kids enjoyed the, the, the atmosphere, the, the bowl mm -hmm. kind of feel. Um, you would have enjoyed a lot more if we had played better, obviously. But I, I really i am disappointed because I thought – we were really, really ready to play, and we we're going to play our best. And we made just too many mistakes uh, to overcome. And then uh, there, at the end, I felt like we kind of let our dauber get down a little bit, and we didn't play as well as we should have in the fourth quarter. It's a pioneer football team that really did play well. When you quite honestly want to think about it, as we take a look at your first half highlights, Tusculum versus Lenore Ryan, and the 20th meeting between these two schools, LR wins the toss. The coach they elect to receive. And really defensively, you come out and really believe that you played very well. Bradley Jones got the start at running back, but they quickly made a change to Nelson Brown, and I think they did it right after this one particular play. Um, he was hit hard by Jay Boyd. Yeah, Jay Boyd's a, a good young player. He's a true freshman playing for us. Uh, coming in, comes in there, put his helmet right on the football. Uh, we were able to get the ball at the 31-yard line. Really nice field position. Good early play force in the game. All right, offensively come out. You go with Luke Lancaster tonight. Skradsky just a little bit uh, dinged up. So you know it's Lancaster. He's got to go for you. And you come out and you, instead of pounding it, decide to go a little play action and try to throw on this first series. Yeah, we wanted to, we wanted to try to get him an, uh, an easy throw or two. Uh, you know, try to, you know, hit something in the flat. Uh, you know, and, and kind of get him going a little bit and see if he could have, have a game. Throw some hitches. Uh, you know, sometimes he just wants to throw it too hard. You know, th you know, we got to get him to throw a little more of a catchable ball. Try to give uh, some different looks uh, that, that we had shown. And right there, I thought we should have gotten a holding. They held you know, on that bench route. Uh, mm -hmm. Didn't get a lot of, you know, didn't get the call. But uh, so 
I'd like to go ahead and kick the field goal. Felt like uh, we struck the ball a lot better. He just pulled a little bit to the right, and so that was a little bit disappointing, obviously, with the big turn of getting nothing out of it. Well, you see a 49-yard temp missing from the upper pylon near the flag. Probably would have been good from 59, but just pulled just slightly. So the Bears drive and uh, would be forced to punt even after that missed field goal. So we're picking up the Pioneer second offensive series. Isaac Robinson for two, then for two more for Robinson up the middle. We talked about seeing the hole getting there quickly. Robinson, I think, just a little bit late. They did a good job on the defensive line. So then what do we try? Deshaun Davis, a new kid for us. Maybe we'll be talking about him a lot in the future. Yeah, D Deshaun's a young guy that's got some speed, catches the ball well. We tried to go to like a, a, a four-by-one look there, a four-receiver look, uh, get, get him out flanked a little bit, throw a little bubble screen out there to Deshaun. He did a nice job catching and getting vertical for the first down. It looked as if Evan Altizer might have been the play. He got dinged up just a little bit because he was uh, hurting in the game. Lancaster to Cruel for 10 yards again offensively right now. That is the, I think, the Lancaster we've seen. Even though he's still humming it, we used to talk about throw it to your target instead of through your target somewhat right. for Luke. Um, on this drive, he does seem to be at least calmed down. Well, I think part of the, that is is throwing a catchable ball is a big, uh, you know, kind of a big deal. We try to go to a four by one right here again and get them spread out. Uh, you know, Dig was on target for about a five-yard gain right there. They didn't really go with uh, Deshaun. We thought he might go with him right there and clear that out. They blitzed. We tried to throw a screen. We got it set up. We got to have a little more touch on the ball possibly there, and, and we got a chance to, to have the play that we want. Pan Cantrell would punt the ball away, 50 yards, pin LR deep. We pick up this drive. Lakeith Brown flies through for his only sack of the game. Yeah, uh, he was just playing football right there. It wasn't anything special. They sprinted out. They turned back the protection. He came over the top uh, quickly and, and made a good play on the quarterback. It's an LR team that's driving again. We're still scoreless here in this opening quarter. And um, I think Keller, I, you know, just as a redshirt freshman, uh, going deep doesn't look as comfortable as just throwing some outs. Yeah, I mean, he's just like any anybody else. You know, he's new in the offense. He didn't play much last year. Uh, understands his dad's offense very well, but, uh, you know, didn't play great. You know, played nicely, mm -hmm. you know, I thought. Uh, didn't – they – Threw a nice deep ball late, but they didn't do anything, I think, that, that we didn't expect. To Stevens, an all-conference punter for the Lenore Ryan Bears. we got a youngster in the back uh, just trying to re uh, return it in Alford. And the muff and the first real big mistake for the Pioneers in the game. Yeah, that hurt us. DeAndre, you know, when, when Evan's shoulder came out, uh, mm -hmm. DeAndre is our backup punt returner. He's going to do some really good things. People kind of got to believe in him on that. But it put us in a bad situation on about the eight-yard line. Our defense really did a nice job rising here to the occasion. You know, they come in with a split zone. We do a nice job playing off of that. Uh, you know, we're, you know, I felt like, you know, th they got a quick offensive line. I don't know how, you know, right. explosive they are because they're not huge, but they're quick. Come the bootleg, nice play by Derez Ben, who's really probably been our most consistent player so far this year on the defense side, and then I'm yelling rub route, rub route, rub route, because you can see the split right here. Uh, and, and, you know, we talk about getting on different levels. We should have been a little bit on a different level right there, but we were able to fight through it and, and knock him off enough to, to keep him out of the end zone. You do a good job three and out, forcing them to attempt the 23-yard field goal, which was good by Hunter Hare. It comes with 4-12 to play in this opening quarter, so it's three to nothing for the uh, Lenore Ryan Bears. They would add a touchdown as Nelson Brown would run for 24 yards up the middle. And so we move to the second quarter of action with the Pioneers trailing in the contest. We pick up here, it's Jordan Shippey up the middle for 10 yards for two, and then another big run for Shippey for 17. Really elusive, doesn't have that top end speed, but man, I tell you what, yeah. when he makes the cut, he goes. Jordan right now is probably playing the best out of just about anybody we have. And, and I really like the kid, he's a, he's a tough kid. He plays hard. Um, you know, right here, and we were trying to get another little screen to him off a of slide protection that we didn't execute extremely well, obviously. Come back, go out, you know, with a play action, got Evan open in the flat. We just missed him a little bit low right there. The tight end should have pinned him. We we're trying to pin that guy to help Luke get outside because that's not what he does great. And then uh, we go with a fake punt. Curry Webb told me all week he thought we had this, um, you know, and really if we just block – I don't know why we ran by that one guy. We'd have scored right here, and but uh, great, great fake. So we come out, and they do a good job. Shippy does a heck of a job. This is probably the best three-yard run you've ever seen in your life because we didn't get the front side backer uh, picked up. 
right there on the outside zone. Then we come back and we bootleg it right here. And I thought he was just going to throw it to the front pylon, decided to take off with it, gets down to about the two. Probably should have thrown it to the front pylon, but, you know, those things happen. So then we put in this play for this wee little sprint out in the boundary. We're tight and release late. And we told him just stick it on him, and he just missed him. Yeah. You know, we had exactly what we wanted on the play. So I wanted to get it back to a, to a two-score game. I'd rather had seven knowing we had the ball coming out, but I didn't want to come out of there with nothing, so we ended up just kicking the field goal. Oh, no question. I think it's the right call. Tommy makes the 19-yard field goal to make it a 17-3 to game because the Pioneers are going to receive the second half kickoff as well. With that momentum that they were just able to generate at the end of the first half, you'd have to believe they would generate that to start the second half. And that's what we'll, where we'll go when we return after this. This is the Jerry Odom Show. Sodexo, a world leader in food and facilities management services. Sodexo proudly serves Tusculum College and supports Pioneer football. Sodexo, making every day a better day. Welcome back into the Jerry Odom Show. The Pioneers versus the Bears. Conference opener for both. We're at the half. We're at 17-3. The Lenore Ryan Bears with the lead. The Pioneers will have the ball to receive the second half, or at least to receive the second half kickoff. Coach, out of the locker room, you got I got to believe that there's a lot of good feel. You guys had a great drive there at the end of the Well, we had a good drive. We moved the ball some here and there and sporadically, but I was really selling the guys on, hey, come out. We get a score right back in this thing. We're, you know, we're right where we want to be. Can't put our defense in bad situations, uh, you know, and let's just go out and play. And we, 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 we got this thing, believe in each other. And uh, then we come out and, and we go three and out with a sack, and now we're kicking out of our own end zone and, and give them the ball on the 35-yard line. So, again, put our defense in a bad way. So we've got to we've got to stop taking these negative plays, uh, you know, to, especially in key, key starts and finishes of quarters and halves and, and of the game. So... It was, it was frustrating. It was a frustrating night, but, you know, we just got to keep on coaching, keep on trying to improve. The Pioneers would, as Coach uh, Odom was talking about, receive that second-half kickoff as we take a look at your second-half highlights. The uh, Pioneers would go three and out on their first, force Cantrell to punt out of the back. Good return by Farmer, setting up great field position for the Bears from the 34-yard line. Keller, again, looking to pass. Just didn't seem as comfortable. Uh, as long as they gave it to number five, they did seem to be extremely comfortable. Nelson Brown had a big day. We'll talk a little bit about that as well. Um, give it to Brown here. I thought your defense, though, is in good position. He was just tough to bring down. Well, we just didn't do a very good job tackling. We're not bringing our feet when we tackle. And, and you know, when, that's frustrating for defensive coaches. You're in position to make the play. You make the play, you know, just make the play, and, and then you don't. We got a little blitz here, right here, a little zone blitz. Therese Ben slid back inside. I think their quarterback panicked a little panicked bit this little bit. time on the, and tried to hit the cross around. We ended up getting the pick and stopped the drive, which was huge in, in that part of the game. Be forced to punt the ball away once again, and then a good dose of Nelson Brown. Brown, 34 carries, 261 yards, 7.7 uh, .7 yard average. I like to see that. And again, he's a youngster. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to see him a lot. Four yards, six yards, nine yards, one yard. JT Graydon, Brandon Williams, Brandon Bartlett, uh, Colton Strickland, a uh, bunch of guys that are in on the stop defensively, Coach, there. They're not quitting. He just seems to be running down here. Well, part of it, too, is we're not knocking anybody back. And, again, it, it's fundamentals. Our fundamentals uh, tackling, we're just not very good. We were blitzing some to try to help stop the run, which does put you in a bind on that. And uh, But we can't miss them in the backfield. You got you know, we got to get guys on his legs. we got to get multiple bodies hitting him, and, and we've got to do a better job of that, and we will do a better job of that. It's a uh, Pioneer team, again, that I believe still flying around with football. It's a weird uh, set of circumstances are going to happen here. We're going to have a personal foul penalty. Uh, we're going to get then an unsportsmanlike penalty, move things back and forth. And I've heard you talk th about this a lot. Don't, don't hurt your team. Don't put your team in a bad way. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm a big believer that 15-yarders will do some extra running for that. I, I, I don't believe in 15-yard penalties. It's, it's selfish football. It's not football I believe in. Um, you and your agenda during that game does not take the place of the other 10 guys out there working hard to try to either stop you or not stop you or what have you. And if we're not willing to do those things, then we're not going to be a very good football team. And we've got some of that we're going to have to teach out of this team. You know, we're going to have to, we're going to, have to grow up, and, and there's a big part of that. 
And if we'll do that, then we'll, you know, we'll make plays. Jay Boyd making another play. Thought he had a solid game as far as forcing the turnovers, uh, forced fumble and a pick. He's a young football player, but extremely talented. We, we think he's going to be a very, very good player. Again, we're playing, you know, really on defense, probably 12 or 13 freshmen are playing mm -hmm. a lot. Um, so, you know, that does bode well for the future. And, uh, you know, Jay's one of those guys we're expecting to be a good player. This is a Pioneer team down just 17 to three. We're still towards the end of the third quarter. The Pioneers pick up this drive with 247 to play. And this is that rhythm I think you're talking about. Cruel for 10, Barnes for 12. Tony Bell comes in trying to get some things done. Outside of uh, Jordan Shippey's three yard run earlier, I thought Tony Bell had the best three yard run of the year against UVA Wise. Yeah, there's no doubt. Tony Bell's a guy we gotta get in there a little bit more. He's another young guy, but, but we think he's gonna be really, really special too before it's all said and done. And, and we got to get him in the game more, and, and uh, you know, they're just we get so many freshmen. We try to run the bootleg again. We pinned it and tried to get it to Evan. Evan's open. We just got to stick it on him. Uh, it's frustrating, I think, for coaches obviously when we have open guys and, and we're not making those uh, making those plays. Good punt right here uh, by Hunter. Does a good job pinning them and pinning them deep, and then we get I think a, a tag for a loss in the first play, and then we you know and then we kind of let them off the hook a little bit, and they flip the field on us. You did flip the field on you. This is a uh, Pioneer football team that again down 17 to three. Um, you get the ball back, did a good job defensively. Yes, they did get out just a little bit, but uh, the big play, the turning point in the yeah, game. Yeah, this uh, two things. It's a little bit behind Evan. Um, and we don't run the right – we run the right route, but not with near enough the right depth by, by Jordan Barnes. He's supposed to be almost 14 yards deep so that, that his guy can't come off and make that play. Uh, that hurt, right. obviously. You know, you, you know I, I tell him all the time, I said, you know, we can't, we can't keep him from scoring if, you, if, you don't, if we're not on the field. You know, defensively give him at least a chance. So right now, and now we start throwing the ball a little bit more, obviously, because we're down and we're trying to find a way to score some points. So uh, now we're just kind of trying to throw some bunch at them and some different looks and formations. And, and honestly, I thought for the most part, the protection was pretty good. Um, you know, when we got sacked a couple times, I thought we might have stepped up a little bit quick when we needed to. And, um, you know, Again, you know, we got to throw a catchable ball high away. That's a hard catch on a bubble screen. Put it on his body. We work on these things. We just got to get better, I mean, in, in a lot of places. I mean, right there, that's open. Just got to stick it on him. And, uh, you know, until we get better at those places, it's going to be hard because people are going to try to, you know, stack the box and stop the run. And if they don't think you can throw the football, then, then you're going to struggle. This was, I thought, a good throw. Chavis has got to catch this ball. So, that could have been a touchdown, you know. What I mean, it it's it's just frustrating. It's uh, it is uh, I don't even know any other way to put it. It's frustrating to watch. Uh, I'm sure it's frustrating for the fans to watch. I apologize to the fans. We're gonna keep working, but to get better. This was this this bothered me uh, right here. This this is the drive that I really thought that we, you know, like right here, you know, we kind of what I call spit the bit right here. You know, I thought. We fought pretty darn hard until those last two plays, and I gave him 55 yards, 60 yards, and he's a great player, but we made him look like Herschel Walker out there, uh, there toward the end. And part of that is being a young football team, um, especially defensively. We don't have a lot of, you know, there's some guys, Bartlett's played some, our corners have played some, uh, like he's played a little bit, but the rest of them are all pretty much newcomers. So. They've got to learn how to play, and even those guys got to learn how to play the way I want them to play. Game, the score not indicative of the way this Pioneer defense played. 31-3, to the final. The Bears get the win. They get their first conference win of the season, their first win of the year as well. They wrap up a four-game homestand next week as they host Limestone at the home of night football, a 7 o'clock start at Moret Stadium. Meanwhile, the Pioneers get to come home for the next four of the next five games. They'll be in the friendly confines of Pioneer Field. We'll start as we normally do in the afternoon at 1.30. We'll welcome the Wolves and then the following week, Brevard. We're back with more of the Jerry Odom Show right after this. Premier Transportation. From the moment you step onto any of the motor coaches, it's clear they pay attention to details. They make sure you have the top of the line amenities, the industry's most innovative technology, and the most advanced safety features to ensure every mile of your journey is a smooth one from coast to coast. The Premier Fleet, 
Escape the ordinary. The journey is half the fun. Premier Transportation, the official bus provider for Tusculum College Athletics. Welcome back into the Jerry Odom Show. The Pioneers fall to the Lenoran Bears by a final score of 31 to 3. It's time now to meet our players of the week. And we do have three this week. We'll start with one on offense. It's Deshaun Davis. He's a newcomer for most of us on the Pioneer football program. Just a young sophomore out of Rock Hill, South Carolina, out of South Point High School. Did have three catches for 37 yards, primarily in his uh, season debut for the Pioneers with the injured at Nick England with the hamstring injury as Deshaun Davis carried the load and was the dangerous threat, including one catch for 28 yards. Uh, one of our defensive players of the week was Jay Boyd, a young freshman out of Vieira, Florida, Vieira High School. Uh, he made a big impact, especially early. On the second tackle of the game, forced to fumble. He finished with six tackles, a tackle for loss, a forced fumble, and an interception. On the season, eight tackles with a tackle for loss, a forced fumble, and a pick. And Hunter Cantrell has had a great season to this point. He's had some good punts and not so good, but for the most part, he's been extremely consistent. The junior from Sparta, Tennessee, from Mike County High School, had nine punts against LR, a 45.2 yard average along a 56 with one inside the 20. For the year, 22 punts, a 42.6 yard average along a 58, and has pinned the opposition inside the 20 on three separate occasions. Time for our call of the game. Where there wasn't a whole lot that was great for the Pioneers, what was great was the fourth down fake punt just before the end of the half, uh, a run by Lorenzo Mitchell. It's a fake, it's just Mitchell, 50, 40, 30, 20. Lorenzo Mitchell knocked out of bounds at about the 15-yard line. As the Pioneers roll the dice here in the final seconds of the first half, and Mitchell, with the biggest play of the game for the Pioneers, has it first and goal to 10. Time now for our post-game wrap-up in the contest. The Bears knock off the Pioneers 31-3, gaining 19 first downs to the Pioneers 14. They did 14 of those 19 first downs via the ground. Pioneers were only able to muster four first downs via the ground. Net yards rushing, we'll show you why. Tusculum 57 yards, Lenore Ryan 290 yards on 48 attempts, Tusculum on 28 attempts. Yet net passing for the Pioneers, 157 yards. Lancaster 17 of 44 with a pick, as uh, Keller was 8 of 19 with two picks, but a touchdown to TJ Smith. Total offense, 67 plays, 398 yards for LR. The Pioneers gain 72 plays, just 214 yards on the day. Pioneers did have two fumbles, lost just one. LR, just one fumble, lost it on the second play from scrimmage, but did throw the two interceptions. Tusculum seven penalties, 55 yards. LR six penalties for 65 yards on the day. Battle of some all-conference kickers to Stevens averaging just 43.8 yards a punt to Cantrell's 45.2. Third downs, Tusculum four of 17. LR was three of 12. Tusculum two of three on fourth downs in the red zone, in which the Pioneers only reached one time, were one for one. The Lenore Ryan Bears were one of two in the red zone on the day. When we come back, we'll wrap it up with Pioneer coach Jerry Odom. That's when the Jerry Odom Show continues after this. Creekside Market has three locations in Southern Greene County to serve. So while you're traveling to or from any game, stop by and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza for those football Friday nights or Saturday afternoons. Creekside Market just off the 107, locations on the Asheville Highway, Camp Creek, and the Irwin Highway, Creekside Markets in Greene County. Welcome back into the Jerry Odom Show. The Pioneers get set to take on the Newberry Wolves. It is the uh, second conference challenge for the uh, Pioneers and this new coaching staff and really a new look Pioneer football team as well. 
baby steps. We'll get there for sure. Newberry, though, they've been there. This is a team you're familiar with. Had a chance yeah. to see them last year in Jacksonville. Yeah. Very close game, tight game there. We yeah. appreciate you knocking Raleigh Yeldale out of the game uh, <laughs> for us. Didn't help us uh, a, a whole lot, but right. uh, always good. I mean, they come off the bus. They look like an NFL football team when they come off the bus. They're a very, very talented football team. Uh, I think they're a little younger on defense than they have been. Uh, their offense is outstanding. Raleigh Yeldale is the real deal. I mean, he's a guy that's he's not big. He's 5'11", 160 pounds, probably soaking wet. But he's, he, uh, and last year when I was getting ready for him, I looked at him and I, I didn't know how well he threw the ball. Mm -hmm. I thought it was sporadic at times, threw the ball short. But this year, he's a whole new dude. I mean, he, he's impressive. He's uh, throwing the ball well. The receivers are running good routes. He still has that same elusiveness that, you know, he, he, you cover everybody. That's the frustrating part of a guy like that. You cover everybody, and then he just takes off on you. And, you know, and that's four or five speed. So it'll be a, it's going to be a challenge. I don't think there's any doubt about it. We've talked about it as a defensive staff. We've talked about it, you know, as a staff, period, that this is a good Newberry team, and we got to come out and play our best, and we got to show the people how good we can be. And, and we're going to keep searching to find different ways. You might see anything this week. <laughs> <laughs> and that's okay. It's a good, I mean, they're yeah. preseason number three for a reason. They've actually had two first-place votes. There's people that believe they're one of the best teams in the league, no question about it. We, we didn't see Nick last week, and we know Evan's banged up. And really, look, those, those are two guys who have been producing on offense for us. And I know it's early in the week. Is there any, any kind of thought about them making it onto the field this uh, week? You know, a chance, I think so. I think, I think there's a chance for both of them. Um, you know, Evan, Evan, Evan's tough as, as a $2 stake, so he's going to try to go if he can go. And, and we just got to see uh, where the other one's leg injury is, and, and we'll kind of know more about that tomorrow morning. But uh, you know, he's he, he wanted to play, it was, right. you know. So he, if he can go, he'll go. It is a Pioneer football team that will take on a Newberry Wolves team again, looking for their first conference win. Newberry able to do that last week. It's a, a Newberry team that will come in uh, with all sorts of hopes, high hopes for this uh, program. Can the Pioneers find a way? Usually at home, things have been good. Maybe we'll ask for some rain because the last time they were here, they botched it. <laughs> we thank you for your participation in the Jerry Odom Show. For this guy, for Nathan Humbert, I'm Brian Staten. And until Saturday when the Pioneers kick off at 1.30, join us on the Pioneer Sports Network at 12.30 for our Pioneer kickoff show. I'm Brian Staten, and until next week, go Pioneers. This has been the Jerry Odom Show. The Jerry Odom Show is brought to you in part by your Greenville Light and Power System, serving Greenville and Green County since 1947. Sodexo, proud food supplier of Tusculum College. By Creekside Markets, stop in and pick up a Hunt Brothers pizza today. By Premier Transportation, the official bus provider for Tusculum College Athletics. And brought to you in part by Comcast. Join us next time for more Pioneer football on the Jerry Odom Show.